Why hello there. Today I'll be teaching you how to run Fortran on a Windows PC because I think that's what a majority of people have. So first you'll want to download Sigwin. One reason that I like using Sigwin is because you can install the gfortran package through Sigwin and run it that way and uh, as you can see it's going to be really easy. So you kind of um, put in all of this. Also if your browser says hey uh, this is a security risk when you're downloading Sigwin. It's just because it's an executable and it's like trying to protect you, but just bypass that and uh, download it. So you can choose a download site to mirror from. Um, I would use pretty much any of them. This is the one that I use. Uh, so just kind of wait for it. And now this is the most important part. You're going to want to install um, some packages. So the ones that I install our GCC core. I make sure it's the most recent one. Usually by default, it's going to say skip, but uh, you'll have to click down, make sure you keep it and um, choose this version and select it. And you're going to want to do that with uh, Fortran. So there's GCC Fortran. You want to keep it. Um, make sure you select the right version. You have to make sure that GCC Core and GCC Fortran have the same, you know, version or else you're going to get an error. So now you want to install it and it may take a little bit of time, not too much. The meanwhile, I guess I'll just say hi. My name is Dahlia. <laughs> um, yeah, this part is the long part. <laughs> Yeah. Maybe I should edit this video and make it go faster. Yeah. Now Sigwin is downloaded. Um, should stop this. Okay. So you'll want to boot up Sigwin. Uh, first, you'll want to get into the directory wherever your codes are. So for in this case, um, if we want to run the propulsion module, then uh, what we'll do is cd, that's change directory, and then paste in that address, and now you're in that folder. So now um, what we'll want to do is compile uh, the Fortran code. So this is when we use gfortran, and then we type in the code name .f, and then this is the command to basically compile it and turn it into an executable, and this is the format in which you would do so. And now you've turned it into an application you can run. Now to run the application, after compiling it, you just type in this and then you can see these, um, this program pop up. So the program's asking you to input U, which is the velocity, and these are some settings. So let me open up the settings. So the input file for this is um, the .data file. Basically, I like to open it in Notepad. You can do so however you want. 
you specify the number of iterations. So this is kind of a set value. Um, this is more than enough for what you'll need. And then omega is the relaxation factor. You don't change that. What you do change is the density. So you can see it's here 1.2. So density will usually correspond with your altitude. You'll want to search what conditions you're flying this aircraft in. But let's say we're kind of keeping it standard. So I'm going to put in 1.225. And then um, this is the radius of your disk, or kind of the radius of the inlet of your um, engine. And in this case, I guess we keep it at 0.875 because that's around what it is for the leap engine. You're going to want to check. And then thrust is how much thrust is being input. Let's say that you're, let's say that you have a one engine inoperable situation. Then this would be like that much. But let's say we're running with I guess, full power. So that'd be two leap engines and that'd be 25,000 newtons. So hit save. And now this is when we start running our program. So it's going to ask you for you, you're gonna put in any number really. Like I'm just gonna put in 0, 50, 100, 150. You can see it calculates it for you each time, 200. Uh, 250 and 300. So now I think that's enough data points that we need that covers, you know, the flight um, velocities that this will be encountering. So when you're done, you exit by typing negative 100, and now it outputs what your thrust slope looks like, right? And now um, your output file has been changed. So you can open this with Notepad as well, and as you can see, it's been changed. And here you go. Uh, there are your velocities, and there is the thrust. So what do you do with this information to get your thrust curve? Well, you can use pretty much any software to plot this. You can use Microsoft Excel, you can use MATLAB, Python, GNU plot, but right now I'm going to use MATLAB because I think that's what we're the most familiar with. So here's this quick code that I wrote up, and I will post this on Canvas or I'll just post it wherever um, you can access it. So basically this code loads that output file. You're going to just want to put in where it is and what the output file is. And then it plots the first column, which is velocity versus the second column, which is thrust. And I like to mark things so that I can see uh, how many points there are. And um, this part is kind of just, um, Normally, it outputs the y-axis or x-axis in scientific notation. I don't really want that, so I turn that off. So now when I run this code, um, it plots what was in that output file, as you can see. So this is essentially how you would use that code and how you install SIGWIN, Fortran, and everything. So please let me know if there's any help that you need or any comments. I'm always monitoring the Discord. And thank you so much for um, being in this class.